Hi guys, Dave in Texas here, and uh, you're looking at a little deluxe, like a LTD or ESP. Nice little guitar. Nice little Les Paul tape shot. Nice little Les Paul shaped body on it. Of course, it came in without any strings or anything, which is going to make it a little more difficult, but I did measure out every one of these frets, and the uh, cowboy chords are really low. So I'm not going to do a, a, a cross the line level on this. I don't have a lot to work with here. But I am going to check it one more time to make sure I know what I'm talking about before I put the nice blue marker on it and see what we come up with. So hang in there. Now, for my nice, nice long scale. And I don't see anything out of the ordinary here, except that some of the frets are low. Which was expected. Alright, guys. All right, see how it stands up? <laughs> and uh, let's just check the scale on it, see what it is. I think it's in between, but we'll see. Yeah, it's in between. No, oh, it's Gibson scale. Okay, let's check that. Let's check the kind of relief we got on this guitar. Well, I can't. The tape's on it. Sorry, guys. Anyway, it doesn't look like much relief, but there could be some because the tape's in the way. But uh, I've got nice, you know, straight, flat frets across here. So that's something to start with. Some are, are low in spots because of that, the cowboy chord syndrome. That's what I like to call it. So what I do before I start shaping these, I use this uh, very good <laughs> Sharpie blue marker. And I come through and I put a nice solid blue line on this thing on each of the frets so I can see what type of removal I'm getting on them. And these are all flattened spots. Like they try to get rid of the, the cuts in it. This thing's almost shaped this way to get this thing covered. <laughs> The tip of the uh, marker has, almost has a flat indented shape in it. I've used it so many times. But it still works, so, you know, keep with it. I think they made these extra good when they made these. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm marking out all these frets up and down the line, making sure I get every bit of them. All right, there you go. Let that dry for a little bit, then come back in and use my medium crowning tool. Right? Nice little set of crowning tools I've got here. Got a small, medium, and a jumbo. And so far, I've not used a jumbo but once, and that was on an old base. So, let's give us some time and we'll get right back with it. Okay, before I go into shaving some of these frets and crowning them up, I gotta verify that I've got the mediums on here. Because there's not a lot of difference, you know, just to eyeball them, right? So make sure I got my small and my jumbos. Still not in the socket. Look at the size of these jumbos, they're huge. As you can see, one of them has been used, one not. So, let's go back in my tool bucket and we're gonna start doing these filings we're going to start with the cowboy cords first the ones that are worse and zoom you in there you won't be able to see a lot from this angle so what I'm going to do is cut away and come in uh, basically <laughs> at my crotch <laughs> now I'll try to lift it up and uh, shoot down at it. so hang in there guys well you should be able to see that pretty good and I'll have to do some little, little bit more rearranging with my body to get at the right spot. Now, what you want, don't want to do is just continually dig across. You want to try to follow the, the uh, uh, radius of this guitar, uh, not putting too much pressure on the center line. Let's see if I can readjust. There you go. Now you can see at least two frets. Okay, so. This is set up for me, you know, in my comfort right at the moment. So let's hang in there and show you what I'm doing here.
Now, what you see are little tiny minuscule amounts of filings that come off with the uh, with the tool, right? Just minuscule. Now, I don't want to boil these things off and get them all over the place. There's no uh, pickups in this guitar, so I don't have to worry about that. But I don't want this stuff uh, all over my shop either. Follow me. So what I end up with is a little bitty uh, crown across the top. It's a little tiny blue line that across the top that I use my other files for. My little uh, tiny hand file to finish up rounding it. So I'm still left with a tiny little ridge on top that I want to knock down. Like I said before, it takes just minuscule amounts of the fret off itself. It doesn't take a lot. Now that's gone. Of course, this will need a polish up job when it's finished. When I finish working it. And I don't like the overall that yet but I'll, I'll get there I'll get there with it now some are going to take a lot longer to do because they've got uh, some other problems with them but that in basics is what we're doing here over and over again to get these uh, frets set up properly again and once we finish with the like five or six of them we'll do a height check with a rocker to make sure that there's no you know problems that we're creating but uh, I've already measured and tested so it should be just fine so we'll go on to the next fret and show you and you can see it's flat as a flitter on top right you see that flatness to it well I gotta knock that down What's really good is when you have a nice clean file, which I've cleaned these with some oil earlier. There we go. And again, I've got that little tiny ridge that's left up there, and at the edge here, you see a little triangle shape. There she goes. Okay. So that's rounded up. It still needs to be shaped up with another type of file that I have. If I can find that real quick and I'll show it to you. And of course it's out of sight right at the moment. Basically what it is is a finishing file that I use. Looks like this. Alright. To finish up that uh, curvature I need to finish up and get the uh, get the, the fret done uh, I'd say like you say on a, uh, a gross basis you know not a, a, a finished basis but a semi finished then come back here with some fret erasers of different grit and put a nice uh, smooth finish on them and put a final polish up on them by going to lesser and lesser uh, abrasive uh, frets I'm sorry lesser and lesser abrasive um, fret erasers I got a set sent to me as a gift that's very nice I'll be using those but again guys let me stress this please don't send me gifts I do appreciate them don't think I'm an ingrate I do appreciate them but the minute I mention somebody's name online, next thing I know, I've got everybody and his dog sending me something. It's like, guys, you know, I am a company. <laughs> this is a corporation. And I need to uh, pay taxes on that kind of stuff. And some of these things, I wouldn't know how to evaluate them. And I'd rather not. So, <laughs> what's the answer? Don't send me any gifts. But, uh, oh, God, it's hard to do. 
But I do appreciate them. I really do. So the guy sent me the fret erasers. Fret erasers. Thank you so very much. But I don't want to mention any names because that encourages people to do it again. Hey, okay. So on to the next one. Let's see what it comes up with. Like I said, I'm ending up with a semi-finished fret. They'll have to go back and do a lot of hand shaping with. This is like the gross amount of fret I'm taking off here to get it back to round again. And uh, they did flatten these things out. I don't know if that was just normal wear and tear, the way God plays, or that uh, someone came in and tried to uh, add life to the frets. Now that one came out really, really nice. That rounded up very nicely. So sometimes it takes a lot, sometimes it doesn't take as much. But I will go back and remark these and see if there's any little tiny specter of a ridge left on it that I can't feel or see. And I've also got a very good magnifying glass I use to uh, check these frets and make sure that nothing's left. Because even with, uh, you know, reading glasses that magnify three times, uh, they can get away from you. You can get a little burr on there you just don't want, but you didn't see it. So I don't depend on just my reading glasses that magnify, well, they're actually magnifying glasses. I don't depend on those at all. I do use a magnifier to uh, give me an idea of what's left on that fret head. Make sure there's nothing left. And that's just from experience. Little triangle left, got that knocked down. Got that rounded up very nicely. So, hang in there guys while I finish up this job and I'll show you the final results. I can't string it up because the guy's, uh, he wants to do all that himself, but uh, I can show you the finished uh, fret job when it's all done. So hang in there. So as you can see, we're moving on down this fretboard, trying to get these all knocked out. We're on this one right here, but like I said before, they will take some final finishing up to make sure we knock down all that little ledge that uh, someone had put into them. And I think we got past that. That's this is well past the cowboy court area, but there's some that are actually still flat down here. It's kind of odd. You know, they try to save a fret polishing or a fret uh, crowning. They try to save on a fret crowning by flattening the frets so they, they play badly. But uh, what they're doing in essence is taking away the uh, material that a repair shop can actually use to uh, re-crown these. So if you got frets that are going bad, don't flatten them. You know, I don't flatten those little divots out of the, out of the uh, fret itself. Leave those alone. I mean, it gets that bad, it's time for a refret or it's time for a uh, uh, recrowning of the uh, frets. And that's the best thing to do, you know. Get it before it's too late. You don't have to replace every fret in the book. Make sure the shop you take it to. Uh, you know, test every single fret all the way down the line, right? Make sure that, uh, you know, he doesn't look at, oh, that needs a recrown. Doesn't test it against the gauge. Make sure he's got enough material there to uh, do a recrown with. And each shop has his own criteria, I've come to find out. If uh, the gauge they use is set against the fret without the, uh, tape there obviously and they'll run your finger over it and see which one's higher the gauge or the uh, the fret if the frets higher than the gauge so they can recrown them 
if it's below or equal to, it's a it's a you know <laughs> it's a fifty fifty chance they can still re, re it's a fifty fifty chance they can still recrown them. If it's well below their gauge, well, <laughs> that's time to pull them and put new ones in. So, hang in there while we go through these and show you what we're doing with the next couple, and they'll cut away. And sooner or later, we'll get down to it, and we'll be using the other files to uh, finish these off with. And this does take a lot of time, guys. I mean, you're seeing kind of time-lapse photography here. <laughs> Plus, we're not even near finished with these as far as each one's concerned. The ones that have just basically put a, uh, a gross recrown on. You still have to knock down that little flat area and that little ridge that's left with these files and round that out uh, by hand with a uh, another file that I showed you earlier because I'm getting a little bit of a crown right now on this one but it's not quite there and it won't be until I finish it up with that little other file make sure all that's down. All right, there it's pretty smooth. And what you're seeing is just the gross job done, not the final. As you'll see, if you get to a, a certain eye level, you'll see a little tiny ridge still left right here that's got to come flat. Now, some of this is just optical illusion. Uh, some are already flat. Some have just a little tiny bit left here that you uh, you can see. But uh, most of them, or sorry, most of the frets already been done. It's just little tiny hangovers that you have to finish up. You know, spots that you miss. And it's all due to lighting. Because you put a hot you put a high intensity light on this, they all look like they're done, but they're not. Plus, I'll take a magnifying glass and go back over these and test them to see what type of job I've done on them so far and what I use is a, it's called a printer's loop looks just like this and it does a great job magnifying these things and shows me every little mark and indention on these And the one I'm looking at right now, so let's go over here and look at this one. Uh, let's look at it. Yeah, it's almost finished. It's got it's the tiniest bit of ridge at the top of this fret, knocked down, but not much. It's a tiny bit there, and a little bit here as well. But anyway, this is what we use, or I use. And it puts the spotlight right on that fret and magnifies it, oh, let's see, about 30 times, almost like a microscope. But it doesn't need any outside light source. So it's very good for what I do. And those little, you know, round ones you see that have a, you know, arms and the alligator claws on them, those are great for working with, the, you know, bigger objects. But when you really want to get down and see the, the actual texture of these frets when you're grinding them, that's the, that's the tool to use. So oh, guys, hang in there while I get the rest of these done. Like I said, I'll cut away in a minute so you have to see every one of these shaved. I want to do one more for you. Let you see how it's done. Let me. It's like a rocking motion you use. Yeah, that's taut. Oh, when it's fret so you don't get one spot overdone and yeah, filing away the middle all right let's just get that one little on the bottom 
still got that little ridge. And you also can feel it when you're actually taking away material that shouldn't be there. You can feel it with your file through your finger when you hold it like this. And that, you know, some people are seeing hold it like this with just a fist, but when you put your finger on here, you can feel the, the uh, uh, grinding going on and the smoothness going on when you run across your fret. So right now that's all smooth, right? You start you know, grinding it, you feel it with your fingertips. So anyway, just a little tip of the trade. Hang in there, guys. All right, so I've gone back and uh, ground all these once again. All right, all the flatness has been taken out of them. They're about rounded again. They're still on the rough side. But I also will, I'll go back and check it with a fret rocker. And I've got a little bit still left of a fret that's too high. And it's high right through the crown part. Right right through there, that section right there is a little high. If I go through and I check all three frets, when I come up with one, like this one is high too, those are not, this one is high. This one right here, sorry guys. This one's high as well. I'll start shaving a little bit off of it, try to level these up. So I put a little mark beside that, it means the one in the middle is a little high. I've already checked the ones behind that, so let's check these next ones. I've got a high one in here. And what I'll do is get a smaller little device I use to check, you know, rocking with these frets. And it's my little fret gauge here that I use for depth. gives me a nice flat surface like where are you camera like this is flat and only covers three frets yeah that one is high that one's level that's level go on down the line that's level that's level that's level that's level. Those are all level. So I've got just these two back here. They're not the same height as the rest of these. Okay? Not to level, so you'll get some string buzz on them in particular. You know, especially if they have very low action. So it's my job to go back there and lower these to match up with the ones beside them. So hang in there guys while I finish that job up and uh, we'll check them again. Well, I went ahead and dressed these frets and you'll see they're perfect level again. No rocking, right? Which is good, you don't want these to rock. You want them to be all level. No rocking. No rocking. No rocking. So. Okay, let's get that one little spot there. It seems a tiny bit high. Let's get that taken care of. And just a little bit high. But you gotta check this as you do it. You don't want to take it too much off. Whereas these files want to take a tiny bit off anyway. And it's flat there now. That's flat, that's flat. I'm checking this with a flat surface. Make sure I don't have any problems. And you check it up and down the fret. You don't just check, you know, top or bottom or middle or whatever. You check it all. Well, what I've done, I finished working on uh, the frets on this ESP. And it's kind of nice. Uh, the only thing is, I've got uh, what's known as fret line marks still, uh, sorry, file line marks still in the uh, frets of the guitars. And what I've done, I've recrowned it and I've lowered uh, the frets that were high, as you saw in the 
film so far, these nasty uh, mean ones. So that they're all nice and level now, right? And uh, I lowered a few and uh, make sure that uh, there's no uh, fret fuzz on this guitar. So, next step is to take these file marks off and polish this thing up real nice and smooth. Make them shiny and make them smooth to the touch. But, I've got a couple of new processes here, right? And here's what they are. They're fret polishing wheels. This is a coarse one, this is a fine one, so you use these sparingly. You uh, take two or three swipes of this uh, wheel across the fret and then uh, finish it up with these. I get that fine polish, that uh, nice, really slick feel to them. Following right now, if you run your nail across it, you can feel the, the uh, file marks that were left on there. Or I can use these. These are new in the package, but I've used these before, right? Sorry, fret erasers. A uh, lot longer to use these things, takes a lot more time. And you finish it up with steel wool still. You still have to do that steel wool work. You get that fine shine to this. <laughs> now, uh, if this was an old customer, I'd try the wheels. But uh, this is a brand new customer, so I'm going to go back to old tried and true. I'm going to use the fret erasers on it, plus the steel wool and save this for one of mine when it's time to uh, polish them up. I've got that uh, refret that I've done on one of my guitars and I'm going to use these on it. But I just want to let you know that uh, I'm keeping up with all the new stuff that comes along to make sure that uh, everybody gets the best care they can of their guitars. So, hang in there guys. What I'm going to do is uh, switch this around, take the tape off, and uh, we'll start polishing these up and show you how that's done with these uh, fret erasers. Next step is to uh, get this thing oiled up again, put some linseed oil on it. And the reason I do that is because it's been under tape for about four or five days. As it got in line to be worked on, the guitar is ahead of it. And that tape is absorbent, it's paper. So on that close to contact, we'll take any oils that are on the board up and cause them to dry out. And therefore I'll be able to play it safe and put uh, some more linseed on it. And it helps to clean up these frets just a little bit so I can get in there and polish them up with the uh, fret erasers. And I keep reading how wonderful those wheels are, but that uh, with a fast Dremel, you're gonna have a problem. You could actually melt the glue that's underneath the uh, frets, which that you don't want to happen. Or you can actually uh, discolor the frets by burning them with a Dremel that's too fast with those wheels, which I can see that happening. You know, I've never done it, but I can see it happening. So these are best left for a guitar of my own to practice on before I try it on the customers. I don't want to ruin these frets after I worked on them so hard. And uh, part of the last part of doing this is, of course, using these fret erasers, right? All these colorful little jewels here. Taking them from coarse to fine. And, uh, oh yeah, one thing I use that most people don't, this is a, uh, uh, a printer's loop, and it can actually magnify, uh, you know, that fret tremendously. I can see any indention, any uh, burr, any dip, anything going on with that fret with this. You go very carefully each one to make sure that uh, there's no problems with the, with the crowning I did. Okie dokie. Now, I don't know how many people do that, but uh, I do it because I just don't have the eyes that can magnify things. My eyesight's not that good. So, hey, next step is to let this dry out, then we'll rub off any excess and get in there with these little tools here, all right? And start off with the uh, grindiest grit, okay? And uh, put a rough polish on the first fret, then come through, I'll do that all first, all right? The grindiest, <laughs> go all the way down, and then come back with the next, and the next, and the next, four times to get the thing polished up and smooth as a baby bottom, right? So when he plays that fret, it's like, wow, that's smooth. No grinding or, or feel of it with the string, because with your fingers, your fingertips, uh, when you're playing, you know, they can be very sensitive after years of playing. 
and you're pushing that string down across it and you feel anything that you're grinding against and that's somebody's not smoothed out the work they've done and that's the last thing I want to happen on this guitar so hey let's I guess time to dry up and go from there and show you a polish up well uh <laughs> I forgot to turn the camera on. I've already done the first fret. But anyway, next fret, guys. Here we go. I put my nice, shiny, uh, you know, protection for the uh, fretboard itself. I take my first grade of uh, fret eraser and I just give it a kind of nice couple of uh, sandings. And what I'm not trying to do is take parts off of the eraser. I'm just trying to smooth, a uh, rough smooth, uh, the file marks that get left in these. And they do. You can see some that comes off, right? And down to the next one. Rub all that junk off. There came off. Down to the next one. And five or six times per one of each of these. Because I'm going to take each level of grit and go over these. Right? And if you've used these before, what we're trying to do is uh, get a nice uh, semi-smooth level on them with each level of uh, grit that you use and you're just polishing the tops and sides but not the very bottoms of the frets. That's got to come later when you use a file on that. At the one of that three sided file has got just one side that's uh, got teeth on it. As well as my finishing file, you see a little tiny thing I use in my hand I just noticed it's in the way big time. But I'm somewhat ambidextrous in that you can't, still can't see that. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, how am I going to do this, guys? No, I still can't see it. Crap. Anyway, you'll see the finished product and see me working on this. And again, that's why these things are expensive to do and not cheap. Because if you do them right, it takes a long, long time to do them. And I'm going to go through this many fret erasers on each and every one of these frets. So an hour and a half, two hours later, I'm down to it. And I end up using a little you know, smaller ones I go, smaller guide or protection. And uh, after the final, I'll go through it with my printer's loop and check to make sure uh, I don't have anything high, I don't have any uh, planes that are on the frets themselves. And it's all been done properly and it's all you know fixed up just perfectly that's what we want to shoot for. And I'm looking for it right now, if I can find it, is my little finishing file. Because what takes place on these frets, this one right here, right? the very top area, I honestly can't see that, the very top is a little bit sharp, where it stops and drops down 35 degrees. That's the sharpness on a finished fret that's been done, you know, somewhat right. It's the very top. All you gotta do is knock that off and finish it off. Again, it's why these jobs are so expensive. It just takes a lot of time. And, of course, the experience that goes along with it. But each one, you just want to go back over and over it, you know, with your eraser. And what it's doing is hitting down that... Uh, file marks that are left behind and you want to make those smooth again just like it was when they were new and sometimes you can see with your naked eye that you've not got that little crown knocked down that takes place when you do these when you take a looped uh, file or horseshoe shaped file uh, on occasion you'll have a little tiny top uh, area of the fret that's uh, flat. And this helps to uh, show that up. So you can go either go back there and hit with the file again, or you can go to your uh, uh, more aggressive uh, polishing tools to uh, make sure that's rounded. Like your finishing file or your uh, one edge three, three sided file, that kind of thing. You can try that as well, get that round back on there. <laughs> Well, we're back in it, and I'll use my last level of uh, grit on this to finish the polish up. And after I do that and do a wipe down cleanup, I go back over with my uh, printer's loop. Come on, focus, camera, focus. All right. 
focus, baby, focus. Oh, I'm down here then, hell. But my printer's loop, and uh, what's called? Uh, if I see any type of imperfection, I'll go back through and get uh, this little jewel here out, right? It's very abrasive. Come here, baby. There you are. It's very abrasive. And uh, go back over the frets again and start over with the uh, with the uh, different levels of grit on the uh, erasers. So hang in there, guys. I'm not going to show you all of these being polished up. Uh, I think that'd be a waste of time, but uh, I'll show you a few. Hang in there. At this point, it's really a high grade polish what you're doing on this, so that uh, anything left behind is coming off and it's all cleaning up. You know, nice thing, it's not hard work, it's just the nice thing is not hard work, it's just very time consuming. You go over one of these frets, you know, five times with erasers. Well, five different erasers. 10 or 15 strokes per. But you get one heck of a nice shiny fret out of it. And they're just baby bottom smooth, guys. I mean, you take a string across this now, it's going to be nice and smooth to use. And not, uh, you know, grainy or gritty to your fingertip, to your fingertips or touch. That's the sh that's a, that's a sign of a good fret job. Well, just as I predicted, I've got uh, a little indention in the fret right here that needs to be uh, shaped up. And I'll have to take a uh, little fret eraser thing here. It's supposed to recrown, which it doesn't, obviously. And uh, so I can't knock that little indention down just very carefully. Now, I don't want to try to dig a hole to get rid of a hole, <laughs> if that makes sense. I just want to level it out the best I can with this. And it's, it's really, it's, it's minuscule, right? But when you run a string over there with your finger like this, you'll feel it. You'll, you'll go, you know what I'm saying? Or your fingernail, you'll feel it. But in most cases, you know, most people are not that sensitive, won't feel any of this stuff. But so far, up until this fret, everything is just fine. It looks just perfect like brand new frets. And my little dog wants to be petted. Kiwi not going, honey. <laughs> Go find mommy. So we'll keep working on this and uh, we'll get this leveled out. Get my little guide in here. It's right on the little emblem, the logo. So we just, just nicely take this across it. smoothly go across so you can't knock that down some and of course it's going to scratch it up some with it you know smooth it out again with the erasers all set on them but we want to get that out of there want all be smooth right across okay so we're going to cut away we're going to get down deep in there take a look at that and see what you did to fix it or make it worse hang in there okay well this little jewel did do the trick. So put that back in our little bucket of shame. And we'll go through our levels of polishing uh, erasers one more time. Just on this one fret. And then we'll go up the next one, check it, to make sure any issues with the next one. And just keep going right down the line. That's not bad to have all those frets, you know, behind, you know, behind this one that uh, all came out just fine and perfect once I did my polish up. That's just part of it. Clean that up. Clean up that fret. Next one. A red one. And these will get down to the polish, final polish on this. Makes it really nice. Really nice and slick. Can we leave the cords alone? <laughs> my dog's about to knock my camera over, guys. You we not go on, honey. But just spank your little bottom. You don't want to do that, you know that. She knows that I never have. <laughs> okay, the final polish up, and let's see what we got now. Oh, nice clean fret, and it's nice and smooth and polished, and the fingernail test that it's finished. So, we're going to mark that as the next one in line. Go to this one with the eyes piece, and 
pretty much be finished with the fret job except for the final little dressing for the uh, little top sharp part still even with the uh, polish up they're still at very very tip that's sharp we want to knock those down and that's because it was a machine that way and not hand dressed so hang in there guys well one more to show you uh, of course it would be the last one uh, <laughs> there's a nice little uh, indention in there that I've got to get to come out and when I say indention I'm talking about something that you couldn't see with your eye the only thing to do is feel it with your fingers but I want to try instead of using it something more abrasive like my little pencil my sandpaper pencil I'm going to try my erasers and see if I can't get that to go away best I can and I bear down with my heavier grits at first but for the most part uh these did a great job. Get rid of the file marks, making sure those are nice and smooth. And that's what you want to see. These first two are the ones that really knock it down, and the last two that really polish it up make them really shiny if you ever get a guitar that uh, has dull frets get these erasers you will definitely make them shine and we can't really do any damage to them with this you know you can't dig into them real deep just take the surface area you know work with that like that see that yeah I can see it this is the surface area all right, I'm going to take it down and take a closer look with the loop here. See what we come up with. Then we're going to put the oil back on the board again. So hang in there, guys. I'm going to stick my head down there. Well, that's it. Okay, so much for the polish up and all that kind of stuff. Let's, uh, let's get in there and put some oil back on it, oil up the board. Make it look like new again. Oh! Okay. And I'll tell you what, this type of weather, it never hurts to protect your board by putting some oil on it. Now, this, I won't let it dry on there. I'm just going to put it on there, rub it in, and. Uh, in just a few minutes and rub it back off again. The first one just soaked right into it. And it really had to take much off at all. <laughs> this one I'm just doing a retouch and getting all those frets nice and cleaned up and finished polished up. And then the last bit of work to them is the uh, see all that stuff off there. Where is it? There it is. With that last cleanup. Right, we're back on our little black guitar again, and uh, what I've been telling you about, I'm knocking down the very sharp tips of these uh, fret ends. What's happened is, the manufacturers cut them at such a direct angle, right, not 35 slanted over like this, but very sharp up and down, and it leaves like a sharp feel to the edge of the tips. All I want to do, if I hold on to it, is take this little file here and just kind of just knock those down a bit. Because I'll change the way it plays. But it'll change the way it feels and make this, these uh, frets much more smoother and uh, not so abrasive to the fingers. And I think just about every one of them needs to be done. That's so what I do, if you can see this or not, there's a short fret for some reason. I don't know how that got in there. Anyway, what I do, I put my finger across there and I just simply do a little bit of filing, not much at all. Just get that sharpness off there. Just to round it over some. Like that. So it's not as sharp. You got it? Okay, that's done. And what's kind of odd about this is not these ones on top that have that sharp feel. At the, you know, towards the head. 
is the ones where you get down here that really sharp uh, edge to them and some of them are actually extended beyond the uh, wow extended beyond the uh, binding so those gotta be knocked down and uh, taken care of so hang in there guys I'm back with the ESP again and what I'm going to have to do is uh, string it up to check the level on this and uh, make sure that I've got those uh, frets down the way I want them down and playing properly but first we need to tighten up all the uh, nuts on this guitar all loose and we'll also do a re uh, we'll re-oil it again Like I say, we just barely tighten these up. We don't put a lot of torque on these. They just break them. Some of these just, wow, finger are loose, you know. Just really loose. Oh, man. Okay, now they're all tightened back up again. And we got that worked out. No big deal. All right, now we're going to string it up. And what's odd is this bridge doesn't fit this guitar worth a damn, you know? It uh, won't sit flat, and uh, I don't know what's on with this. Probably a new bridge. It looks brand new. But what we're going to do is string this thing up and try to adjust this bridge as best we can and get uh, a level and an action. Uh, look at this guitar and make sure the frets don't need any more work than they need so I'm going to end up putting a new set of strings on this boring, no charge but first I want to make sure that uh, we've got these strings set up uh, sorry first I want to make sure we got the frets set up right Make sure that they're okay. Bring this back up. Yeah, that much. Wrap it around. Bring it tight. Okay. And you may or may not keep these strings on, I'm not sure. They're brand new tin and muted areas that are nice. And of course we'll bring it up to uh we'll bring it up to pitch to make sure, like I said, uh this thing is done right. These uh frets are all nice and level and even. We got everything done. But I've already, you know, measured this uh over and over again to make sure I've got this thing right. With uh my scale and caliper, micrometer, make sure I've got the proper amount off of each fret to make it last play level. Just can't eyeball it. And I'm just doing this real quickly. Get this done. that uh, bridge doesn't fit this guitar for diddly. I don't know what with that. That's got to be a new bridge because it just doesn't fit. I'm going to go down. I'm not going to force it. I'll have to get in touch with him and see what's up with that thing. I'm pretty sure he's never had it on there before because this just doesn't work. And of course it looks brand new as well. That's always a hint. Let's get that other string out of the way. Sorry guys, I'm not going to show you how to string this thing up. What I'm doing is show you the great uh, recrown job I've done on this guitar. Make sure that's all nice and right. Alright, next one's. I 
And I'll be using my action gauge and my relief gauge to make sure that uh, we're not going to have a lot of buzzing on this guitar. Because as he said, it was buzzing like crazy before. He had problems with the frets. They weren't level, which they weren't. There's like three or four high ones. And that, of course, makes for a nightmare trying to play it. And like I said, I'm just stringing this up real quickly to get that uh, information to me. What else needs to be done on this before I can turn it loose? As it sounds, it should be all nice and level again. It should be playing real nice once I finish it up. So I did contact him and said he wanted to do the work himself on the uh, installation. Also said he had the proper nut for it because this nut is definitely the wrong one. It's just uh, sucking these tins in like they were just, you know, candy. It's just not the uh, right nut for this it. It looks like it'd be like a 14 on this thing. These, these, these grooves are cut huge. You never believe this, but they're, I mean, it's big. Way too much for these tins and swallow these strings and you want you want the strings to be like you know 50 percent into the nut and 50 out for all the uh braided strings at least and the uh, g on up you want most of those in the nut but not real tight in the nut if you can get uh, a good uh you know 10 20 percent higher in the nut It'll hold that sustain much better. But that's some work that gotta be done. And he wants to do that himself, which I don't blame him. Some of this stuff's fun. It's fun to me. Once we get this done up, then we can do our test to make sure those frets are where they're supposed to be. And still then, there's not a lot we can do. Like I said, if the guitar came to me with no strings on it, no bridge, no nothing, just uh, it was bare. <laughs> Whoopsie. It was a bare guitar. And we'll make sure that, uh, you know, by putting the strings on, we'll know what the relief level is. And the action, all that good stuff. And finish it up for him. And until it's ready. I had it for a while. I just did. Uh, he brought it in when I, <laughs> I guess five or six, seven guitars were in front of his. And that you can't help. It just takes time to get to it. And uh, each one's got to take his turn. I can't just uh, skip around a lot. Of course, if somebody's got a gig or something, you know, that nine has to have some help real quick. I've done that before, obviously. Especially on my old customers, my old buddies. So they don't uh, go out without a guitar. And of course, we still have that lend lease thing. <laughs> but uh, if they put down a deposit, they'll let them borrow one of mine, depending on you know, what they need to play. So if they don't have a Rickenbacker 12 string, I got one, and they can play it, you know, with a deposit, bring it back, get their money back, as long as there's no damage to it, no problem. You know, these guitars need to be played. They don't need to be sitting around my uh, office, you know, doing nothing. And I'm glad to be of help. And I've never had anybody walk off any of my guitars. I have them get them damaged. I have one almost stolen. <laughs> and just watch that 12 string. What happened to it? That was amazing. But they chased that guy down. Got him to drop the guitar at least. At least throw it. <laughs> Didn't lose it. Small comfort. 
it's always fun doing these with this little guy. Trying to keep these under is not the easiest thing. There we go. Anyway, so I'm going to go, why are you going on that trouble just to string it up for the test purpose? Well, you may keep these strings. They're brand new. And there's five dollars you don't have to spend on nothing. Okay, last string, last string. I'll uh, get the test done. See what's going on with this thing. <clears throat> I want to explain to him that uh, we got a problem with this bridge that I can't fix without his permission. He needs to take care of this thing. This bridge set up right. And these just don't fit. Needs to be drilled out, most likely. Now, I'm just really wondering, did he ever have this thing on there? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's brand new. Of course, uh, it'll fit you know, real high, <laughs> like uh, it's very top level of its you know, length. That's not a good idea. All right, always the infamous E string. Let's get this thing started. A little bit of pressure on it, get it going. Off she goes. And I keep it below this line here. And off she goes. There we go. Yeah, that's doing it. This nut's already cracked, so you will have to replace this nut sooner or later. It's got a weird cut in the eastern groove. Where that came from. That's that. And what we'll do, we'll tune this thing up in a little bit, switch it around, and then get an idea on the measurement. Okay, so hang in there, guys. Hi, guys. Dave and Texas here, and what we've got is a level up crown job on this guitar. And what do you think about the job? It's great. Uh, before, I would bend a note, and the frets were all scratchy, buzzing all over the place. Uh, wouldn't hold tune uh, from when you fret a note. Now they're all nice and smooth and perfect. Good deal. No, let's, no buzz. Great. Let's, I tell you what, let's hear the true voice of that guitar. What does it sound like? <laughs>
cool. Let me ask you this: uh, Where do you, who do you? What band do you play with? Or what who do you play with around here? I play in my bedroom. <laughs> Your bedroom, oh, the yeah. bedroom band. Bedroom. Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. If somebody, if somebody wants to pick you up as a guitarist, how do you get in touch with you? Well, I have a YouTube channel. It's uh, Shred Legend. Shred Legend. All one word. Uh huh. You got a handful of videos. Maybe like five or six. Cool, cool. Are you looking for gigs? I mean, you're good enough to gig. That's obvious. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I do work from home most of the time. Uh, I think another year or so, that's going to be permanent. Oh, because okay. right now, it's kind of up in the air if I'm going to be working from home permanently, but uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it will come out. Good, good deal. All right, I'll tell you what, try one more setting and let's get some more music going. Okay. Try another setting that you like. <laughs>
Okay, cool.